I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to be here. I'm the wandering prophet. Why? Because every place I go, I tell the truth. <laughs> and they tell me to leave. Like I've had five teaching jobs now. Five. With four of those jobs, all the schools have closed. <laughs> this is the fifth. I'm getting there. I'm working on it. No, you know, things are bad all over. Like, the economy's bad. School's facing a lot of academic challenges, you know, a lot of financial challenges. I mean, you know, keep your bills paid. For example, they got behind on the uh, garbage company bill. Way behind. I heard the other day the company called and told them if they didn't pay up, they're going to stop delivery. <laughs> you know, we don't know what's going to happen to us as teachers. We're looking far down the road. Things like, you know, insurance, retirement, etc., etc. We got Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew's got it all planned out. See what he's going to do. He's going to let us use the eternal flame to roast hot dogs. <laughs> teacher's going to build a little shanty town out there for the teachers. Right out there in the front. And just let them come and try to move it. Like, you know, this thing about health insurance. You know, it costs a fortune for anything, so Dr. Matthew had a great idea. He renegotiated with another company. The whole fact is going to another group. The only problem is they're veterinarians. <laughs> well, you know, when I asked the faculty tonight, I said, I sat around a little bit and I said, tell me something. Uh, tell me two things. First of all, what kind of jobs did you do when you were going through graduate school? And then also, what was the strangest course you ever had to take uh, when you were in school? Just one of those courses that just, you know, just don't quite understand the way out, you know. And uh, I heard from about four or five people, uh, really interesting, like uh, Dr. Trevor Grizzle wrote, uh, and he's done all kinds of things. He mowed lawns at uh, Southwestern, he, he was a guard, uh, he picked up trash. Um, I don't know what part of town he was in, but uh, the, uh, he had a lot of different things. Um, one thing he did though was interesting is that years ago in my first teaching job, very first one, a little college in North Dakota, I went there and uh, there was this new student from I think Jamaica. Is that where Dr. Grizzle is from? I think it's Jamaica or Bahamas. Jamaica. And there was a new student from Jamaica, foreign student, and he was pushing a little broom. And that was Dr. Trevor Grizzle. And he stayed there one semester. <clears throat> and then he went on to a big school in Tennessee, and then he graduated and went to Southwestern Baptist Seminary and was the first black PhD candidate that graduated from <laughs> Southwestern Baptist Seminary. Man set all kinds of records. He also has tenure. I don't have tenure. <laughs> I was the teacher then, but I don't have tenure. <laughs> But you see, I don't care because I got 20 here. <laughs> well, anyway, some people responded to this, and I just I thought you might like to, I, I just thought you'd get a kick out. Dr. Norwood responded, for example. And it's interesting to know what he went through. Um, for example, he worked for the public library system in Louisville and also served as a chaplain for the main prison in Nashville, Tennessee. Now that's what I call a dream job. I mean, just think of the congregation that can't get to you. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, uh, I asked him, what's the strangest course you ever had to take? And he, now this is what he said, this is what he said. The strangest course he had to take was, quote, assessment of special needs students. So what does he teach here? Abnormal psychology. <laughs> then there's Lily and my wife. Strangest course she ever had to take was swimming. Required, and she, she swims like a stone, straight like that. <laughs> Lily cannot swim a leg. The Lord help us to keep us away from water because it's straight on down all the way. Now, how could she not swim? Not swim a stroke and still pass swimming. 
Turns out there was this lifeguard teaching the class. <laughs> and they became friends. And she got a passing grade in swimming. So you don't know the woman. You think she's just a scholar. She has her ways. <laughs> inside a room. The angel said, go right on in there to the desk, get past that. And in the desk was a long line of people, and Lily was sitting at the head of a desk, and everybody was going by, and she was saying, no pass, no pass, no pass, no pass. <laughs> and Dr. Edblad, Dr. Edblad wrote back, and he didn't have a lot of overly strange jobs. Uh, he worked as a pastor and a youth minister. Um, he did try his hand one time being a lifeguard. But that only lasted about a week. Because everybody, somebody, every time somebody started to drown, he'd get up in his chair and say, I see that hand. <laughs> Ken Maiden. Ken Maiden had a similar story. Ken Maiden was a youth pastor. Worked his way through school by going one day a week for seven years. He worked his way through school by going one day a week for seven years. There's something biblical about that. <laughs> but the strangest course he ever took was Ag Ed, which sounded like an agricultural course, but was actually research design. But he says the course really helped him as an administrator, shoveling, digging, cleaning out stalls. <laughs> See, that's, what hit, that's what's ahead of you, Dr. Maiden. That's what's ahead of you. We're going to need the stalls cleaned out. Now, Ed Decker. Ed Decker's a story. This is a case study. Ed Decker really had a colorful church job. Sort of hard to see Ed in church, but anyway, really had a colorful church job. Every Friday night, he had to tear down a portable preschool setup and put it back together the following Sunday evening. And he kept forgetting what toys went in the room. However, interesting enough, but listen to the strangest course he took. The strangest course he ever took was called Play and Organizational Behavior. <laughs> play and Organizational Behavior. Let me read you what Dr. Decker wrote. He said, we spent the entire semester playing. Spitball fights, playing capture the flag in the classroom, body painting, eating without our hands, etc. It was really fun. And you wonder why his classes are like they are. <laughs> Mansfield took a hoity-toity seminar. He says that he took a course on parables at Vanderbilt taught by Robert Funk of the Jesus Seminar fame. And these are the guys that you know decide what Jesus really said. And the assignment, he said, in Dr. Funk's class was to present a parable. And one student brought in a wheel of lights which reflected off the walls in a dazzling array in a darkened classroom. And then the student took a hammer and smashed that wheel with reverberating sound and spraying glass. The existentialist funk went into hysterics. He explained that the parable impacted him with the deep inner meaning of the glorious innocence of man being broken by the brutality of meaningless worldly existence. The student thanked him for the interpretation. He had no idea what it meant. It was just an idea that came to him out of blue to fulfill an assignment. Which may say something about how many of the assignments students turn in and also how we grade them. Now let me explain this. If you want to do well for Dr. Mansfield, don't prepare. <laughs> Go in and let it happen. Be the times. Well, I guess that really leaves me. And I, I didn't really have any strange courses, but I did have a lot of strange jobs. I, uh, let's see, I was an admitting clerk in an emergency room. I was a blood bank technician in a hospital, a clerk in a supermarket, assembly line work at an automobile factory, and an armed guard for a detective agency in Chicago. Believe it or not, it's just me, guy in the wall. And my secretary, Tula Bell. Aye, uh, that was a job. But what I remember, one of the most embarrassing things is, when I was working in the little emergency room, uh, when the ladies would come in late enough to have their babies, I had to come running with a wheelchair and immediately get them in as soon as they got in the door. And you know the story about the fullness of the moon, certain times of the month when babies just come? Well, it's true. 
And of course, certain times I would complain. So one night, the door opened, and in came these two ladies walking together. And I knew that one was with the other one. And I couldn't tell which one. <laughs> and I panicked. And I didn't dare ask. So I just swallowed real hard and went running up to the wheelchair and took the